Good morning, this is Alex. This is a lock that I got from my good friend Bosnian Bill. Um, about five inches long, two inches tall. Um, this part is steel, and I'm going to zoom in. And I hope you can see this is a this thing is probably a hundred years old. It's definitely older than probably Bill and me combined. Um, which says a lot. If you really. look at it in the light, you can see some. It's kind of out of focus, but you can see that it's been. I can't remember what that's called, but. It, when it was new, it would have been very shiny. It has all these little sort of polish marks on it. So this is the it. door to what I'm going to assume is a safe deposit box. Um, I guess before they went to sort of the standard of having I suppose it could be a mailbox, but that's a heck of a chunk of steel for a mailbox. So I'm going to assume that it's some kind of safe deposit box. Now, I spent a little time fiddling with it and immediately concluded that it was old and gummy and I know that Bill hadn't tried to open it or he hadn't opened it. Um, so I took off the screws in the back which were here and I don't know where they went, somewhere. In the back you can see that they even bothered to polish the back of the lock um, which this, well you would see this part but you would never see this part and it says, I think that's a G or a C Maybe that's a 662, something like that. And this is a, I mean, you can just see this hunk of steel. Look at that. That's, uh, that's what? It's a half an inch of steel. I haven't, I'm not going to go try to scratch it or anything, but that's massive. Here's the lock itself. Um, made out of brass. Uh, At the very top there. It says patent number, patent August 30th, 1898. Doesn't even have a patent number. So I'm going to assume, I'll assume it's American, but we actually don't know. Except that, whatever, it is an English speaking country. Now, the lock is presently in an unlocked condition, there's some signs of corrosion. If you look in this little hole here, you can see that's the the uh, stub, a stump rather, and you can see the lever pack aligned. You'll also notice that there's some, looks like it's been beat up a little bit on here. There's a small notch here where the um, where the key would align there to, to for key retention. So there'd be a notch in the key that would get caught behind this little lip here. Um, I was just checking, I had to go find my magnet, but um, actually none of the parts that are um, superficially visible <clears throat> are uh, is made of steel that I can tell. So um, <clears throat> it's either brass or bronze. So um, similar in construction to um, the SMG and Yale locks that we looked at before. Um, so at any rate, the uh, I could not manipulate the bolt back out, and I don't know why. Um, and um, Adrian might come and uh, order a fatwa or something against me, or send the uh, German police to punish me. But um, I'm going to open this up and see what's going on because I think it's a beautiful lock, and I'd like to be able to open it, maybe even make a key for it, um, and uh, add it to my collection. So, for the first time ever, I am loosening the screws on the front of this little guy. I have no idea how this comes apart, and I'm hoping that it wants to come apart with the top coming up, because the alternative is that a whole bunch of stuff is going to dump out. But, um, okay, that feels good. Okay, now, what do we have? We have the curtain. Make sure I'm still in frame. I'm 
this up a little bit. So I have a curtain, just a piece of brass. The key sits in there. I don't have a, doesn't look like I have a key shaped thing laying around, but the key would go inside there. We have the front cover, and there's the back. Interestingly, this is um, the uh, nose, which is this part that extends out. Um, and that actually would, and when assembled, comes through this steel plate like that. Right, so um, it's protected by steel, so I guess you don't really need any um, steel inside the lock. But anyway, that's actually very interestingly, uh, the camera wanted to refocus for me, it's actually very interestingly uh, sort of swaged in there. Um, so it's a separate piece instead of part of the casting, which is kind of neat, but you can kind of tell that it's stamped sheet metal. Anyway, so I've lowered the camera so I can get a better macro view. Now we see inside this lock a lot of dirt and detritus. Um, and a few things that I've not seen before, interestingly. Um, so it has your um, standard lever pack um, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine levers, probably eight. And the first thing I notice, apart from the dirt, first thing I'm noticing here is this, this bit right here. If I turn this slightly, well, maybe not. But in one of the other locks we looked at, this thing acted like a master mechanism, um, mastering mechanism, and allowed you to set all or most of the levers without, um, without the proper key. So that's kind of interesting. So this might actually be a postal lock or something of that sort, because you wouldn't think that a safe deposit box would have that sort of feature. Maybe it was off of a hotel, who knows. So I'm going to try to retract the bolt now that I can get better leverage on it. Okay, so I've managed to very gently make the bolt release. There's a lot of goo in here, a lot of dirt you can see. Actually, that's an insect. So Bill sometimes jokes about bugs and bugs and uh, spiders and stuff in his locks, but that appears to be a, uh, uh, I don't know, a little beetle or something maybe? Not sure. There's a, we have a, uh, bug expert in our midst, maybe they can identify that. Maybe get a country of origin or some CSI kind of thing like that. At any rate, there we go. So we set the bug aside next to the screws. Piece of history there. I may even put him back in. Um, so I'm going to very gently remove the levers and set them aside. So first thing I notice this top lever has a where are we? Has an oblong hole in it. Okay. And it also appears to have an additional notch here, which is kind of interesting. So we'll take that may have some significance in the master locking or the master keying system. Um, you also see it's relieved in the back which, as we've talked about before, can um, help reduce the ability to uh, decode the lock visually. Also some dirt, or more pieces of that bug on there. And we'll set that aside in frame. Good. And then we'll go to the second lever. Wants to bind on this guy. So this one has a round hole. Um, you can see that this wire is swaged, possibly brazed in place, and it is made of not steel, so probably brass or bronze or something like that. Interestingly, I am not seeing any numbers on these. 
That may have a two scratch, number, but I can't quite tell. This one has a one scratched into it. Um, I didn't do that, so maybe some locksmith did. Um, if this one's a three that I'm going to get, but it's just to remember the order to put them back in. It could be that those are ones. This curious mechanism here, which I'm going to guess is part of a either bypass or master key type of mechanism. Let me zoom in here. Let's see, let's see what I'm on about. So I'm, I've removed all the levers, and the key would come up and turn and push this around. Right? There's this curious little notch here. The bolt is actually there. So this, the bolt is in, or the bolt is out, this is certainly not going to be able to retract it in any way. It has a little stop here. It stops on the post there and it has this little notch. Now you'll notice that the first lever has a notch that lines up with that and it has the ability to move in and out, which is curious. I have a feeling that if you are able to set this in this gap here, that if you were to line the other levers up on the post, that the lock would open. You'll even notice here that this has a little curve or a little slope on the face of it, which does not appear to be a wear mark and leads me to believe that that wants to catch a lot of the bottom of that of the uh, stump to slide right up in there. The stump has a little groove this way down it so that um, these little teeth on the on the uh, things will actually grab in here. Two little clunks there. So we have this little mastering device which is made out of at least four pieces of metal that are attached to this plate. One, two, three, four um, pieces of metal. Also quite dirty. And then we finally have the bolt. There's your bolt. Um, let's see where the key's scraped against it. So, key would interact with this and probably grab this notch here for the key if it were like this. My, yeah, I'm still on frame, thank God. The key would come around as it turns and push this away to draw it out. And uh, where did that go? Yeah, no. And then as it comes back out, it's going to go down there. And you can see corresponding wear marks along here where the key would have been engaging. I think that mark is from when I was trying to pick it. So, pretty cool little gizmo. Okay, I've got the, I didn't lose too much, but I have the uh, back case of this lock. That with all the guts inside. Um, this appears to be a casting. You can you know, sand casting even. You can see the roughness in here. Hear it when I I'm gonna stop using that because it's just too rough. Um, in here, some of these areas are machined. Probably where the important points are. This appears to be a piece of drill rod that was um, brazed in there. There's some other areas that are machined. You can see that, but there's a little slot here um, for one of these things to uh, operate in. Um, there's this little pin that is a stop for that mastering thing and all that. So I think I'm going to gently clean this, um, and uh, which is to say I'm not going to use any kind of abrasives. I'm just going to probably a little soap and water, and uh, just to get the dirt out and get the black off all of these, um, all of the 
levers. I believe this one goes here. Um, the black off all the levers. Nope, that's number one. Um, and uh, put a little bit of lube in there. A little three-in-one oil or grease or something. Put her back together and see if we can't figure out how it's supposed to work. So, at any rate, I've not seen a lock made this way before. Maybe some of you have and can provide some information. Um, I think I'll post this uh, disassembly part on its own. And, uh, let's see if we can get this in here. Um, and, uh, so maybe I can get some more information. Um, and please, if this is some kind of historical relic or something, um, please let me know. Um, so I don't bugger it up too much. But anyhow, beautiful lock from... 1898. I may have said 1896 before. 1898. So 100 and, geez, 115 years old. So with a beautiful brass hinge on that. I don't see that stuff anymore. So somebody's box number 221. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Um, sorry if this ran a little long, but. I find these things very interesting. I hope you do too. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and you enjoy my work. And uh, as always, have fun with your lock sport activities while keeping them legal. So we can all continue to have fun. Thanks for watching. Cheers.